one thing I want, want to happen tonight is I don't want anyone to get scared. Um, in the presentation, there will be pictures of earthquake aftermath. There will be some earthquake sounds, but it's all just sounds. There are no real earthquakes happening tonight. Hopefully, knock on wood. Um, has anyone ever, kids especially, how many kids do we have here? Raise your hand if you're a child. Have any of you ever done a fire drill? Raise your hand if you've done a fire drill. Okay, think back to the very first time you did a fire drill, maybe in an elementary school. Was it scary? It was a little bit scary because you didn't know what was going on, huh? What about the second time when you did a fire drill? Was it less scary? It was less scary, wasn't it? Because you knew it was happening, you knew it was time to line up and get out the door with your class. And each time after that, it's just a drill now, right? Hopefully that's what's going to happen with the earthquake drills. This is the first time that Utah has done a statewide earthquake drill. It's called the Great Utah Shakeout, and we're going to learn what to do tonight um, during that drill. So, I'm going to turn my little machine on here. I have a new gadget, so if it doesn't work completely like it should, then it's, that's why. Okay, so are you quick ready? Um, earthquakes can happen anytime, but this time we know when it's coming. Speaking of the drill. On April 17th at 10.15 in the morning, Utah is holding this earthquake drill. All of Naval School District is registered to participate. In fact, we're over 25% of the population of the state of Utah is registered to participate at this point. That's uh, 700,000 people are registered on the shakeout site. They're hoping to get 800,000 before April 17th. And I'm going to teach you tonight what you do. It's a cold winter day in Utah. Along the Wasatch Front, hundreds of thousands of people are busy at work. Many of them are commuting to jobs in different counties, far from where they live. 80% of the state's 2.7 million people live and work in the region. Today, these families and many others across the region will be separated. The largest earthquake to hit Utah in modern times has just begun. The rupture travels approximately 25 miles north along the Wasatch Fault. Some react appropriately, others don't. Over 10,000 buildings collapse. The shaking lasts for nearly a minute in some areas, damaging 285,000 buildings. Even in buildings that are not damaged, possessions fall down or are thrown across rooms. Infrastructure is destroyed. Utilities throughout Utah are disrupted. 2,300 people will die. 30,000 people will be injured. And $35 billion in building damages will occur. Finally, the shaking is over. A large number of people are trapped in collapsed buildings. Over 160 fires start, some turning into conflagrations. Hundreds of thousands of people are trying to use their phones, causing the system to become overloaded. In the months ahead, there will be tens of thousands of aftershocks. Residents will struggle to recover from the earthquake. There will be no water for weeks or months and no electricity. Traveling around town will be more difficult and time consuming and 350,000 people will be displaced from their homes. We are all in this together. We will all suffer the earthquake's consequences if most of us do nothing now. How quickly you will recover from this disaster is up to you and those around you. Your level of personal preparedness will determine your quality of life after the quake. Here are a few things you can do to prepare. It's a good idea to have a fire extinguisher, a first aid kit, and at least a three-day supply of water for each person in your household. Have an emergency plan and decide where you will meet up with your family after an earthquake. Make sure there is a person out of town you can contact to let your loved ones know that you're okay. 
When remodeling your older brick home, consult a professional engineer or the Utah Guide for the Seismic Improvement of Unreinforced Masonry Dwellings. Consider whether earthquake insurance makes sense for you as part of your financial plan. You should also secure furniture, your hot water heater, and heavy or valuable items so they won't fall. Preparedness is not only for the home, but also for business. Be sure that your company has emergency plans for a major earthquake. Empower yourself and your family. Be prepared. For more information, visit www.bereadyutah.gov. to get ready for earthquake, to be able to prepare for and survive and recover from. Steps one through four must happen before the quake, so that's now, because we don't know if it's gonna happen tomorrow, or in May, or next year, or in 10 years, we don't know, so that's why we prepare now. Step number one is a big one, probably the biggest, maybe the second biggest, it's a big one. In an earthquake, people don't, well, the biggest damage comes from things rather than buildings collapsing. Now, if your house was built after 1970, it's probably not gonna collapse. If you live in an old pioneer home, we'll get to that part. But, but when things fly around and things tip over and stuff, that's where lots of injuries happen. So we're gonna um, begin to identify and fix the hazards in our home. So while I'm going through this, I want you to think of your own home. Um, you may not have this color cabinet, you may have lower cabinets, you know, think of your own home because this is the space you're gonna be trying to fix. Um, we all have cabinets in our home, right? Anyone doesn't have cabinets in their home? They need cabinets. We'll take up a fund if you don't have cabinets in your home. <laughs> Do you have glass in your cabinets? Anybody have glass in their cabinets? Okay. So what can we do to fix this problem of the, get the glass coming out of the cabinet? We can put, hook and eye is another word for Velcro, Velcro closures, child locks, positive catches are those ones you have to pull out when you open in the trailer, you know, they, they catch like that. Um, there's ways to do that, and then appliances. The other things that might happen in your kitchen is refrigerators tipping over, um, moving around. It's interesting, if you've seen videos of surveillance footage in different places, things just, it's like they're pushed from behind. They don't just jump up and they just fling all over the place. It's a really strange, actually, thing. Try not to be in a grocery store when the, the earthquake hits, because <laughs> Bad thing. So flexible gas lines for your um, gas appliances. Furniture straps will work on appliances as well. All right, how many have objects on open shelves, tabletops in the home? Vases, things you don't want broken, okay? Um, there's some products that you can use. They're called earthquake putty and museum putty. It's a, it's a like, sort of like that stuff you stick posters on the wall with, but it's not like that. I mean, it's that sort of consistency. You roll it into a ball like marble size, and put it on the bottom of the things you don't want tipping over and you stick it on your on your shelf. It's removable. It won't hurt anything, but it will keep it from tipping over and breaking when an earthquake happens. So, or you can always move to lower shelves. There we go, I just went over all of that. Okay, now I personally don't have a lot of um, collectible things, but I have more of this kind of stuff that, that is more valuable to me. I've spent more time and energy and money putting up things in bottles um, that are in my food storage room than I have on collectible things. So in our area, in our culture, in our LDS culture, this is a big problem. If, if there's an earthquake and these things end up on the floor, that's gonna be a sad day, not to mention a big mess. So there's ways to take care of this as well. There's lots of interesting ways actually people have come up with. Um, strapping, all sorts of different ways. First, let's brace your shelves though. Just like you would a bookcase, 
You can brace these shelves to the floor or to each other or to a wall stud so they don't topple over with, with some deep, long um, screws. Secure the contents with straps, bungees, wire, etc. You can also um, put them in the boxes that they came in, the bottles that you bought, in, and if you don't get, and Grandma gave you the bottles, you're not going to have those boxes probably. But there's other ways to secure those. Here's a picture of some gorilla shelves with bungees across, right in the holes that are already in the shelves. Now that top box up there might fall off. I think you need to strip a couple more. Here's some other ideas. Uh, putting wood all the way across to make some fences. This is a shelf unit that came from Costco um, that has the, the fence on it already. So that you can purchase it that way as well. So think about in your food storage room what you wouldn't want destroyed or thrown on the floor and then secure it. Here's some other ways to keep things from bouncing around together. This right here is tube socks. When your socks get holy, your husband's socks get holy, just cut the bottom off and make them into sleeves to put around so they're not rattling around against each other on the shelves. You can also use rubber bands for that to keep the, the um, cans from bumping together. If you don't have the boxes, find some other bins or boxes to put, put your jars in. Okay, hanging objects. How many, I know we all have pictures on our walls. Question? No, comment. Comment. The boxes that your six number 10 cans come in yes. will hold 15 quart jars. That's a fact, yes. I have those in mine as well. Very good, thank so you. Replacement boxes. I would also put the, the, the tube socks on there, yep, to keep it from bouncing around. Sorry, I forgot to mention, you're welcome to ask questions and just yell because I probably won't be looking out for questions. So. Pictures on the wall need to be in a hanger that if it bounces up, it won't bounce out. And this is the kind of hanger, it's on the order form if you're interested in that. Um, and then you can put quake putty on the bottom corners to keep it from bouncing even further. And never ever hang anything above your bed that you don't want crashing down on you in the middle of the night. Does anybody have big pictures above their bed? or mirrors, or anything like that. And, and tonight, you're gonna move them, right? Yes, glass will break in an earthquake, so bed under the window, not a good idea either. Okay, electronics and furniture. We all have DVD players, those kinds of things on top of our televisions, or entertainment centers. There are little straps, and they're all in that order form, um, that you can do use to secure those kinds of things. Tall furniture, you can use simple as little L brackets on the wall, or you can have straps that undo, and you know, the, they have the clips like this up here, so you can move them around if you need to. And those, and I mentioned all that stuff's a cost, right, didn't I? Yes. And electronics as well, there's monitor strap, there's anything you could have that could topple over, there was a strap for it, just so you know. 